Hi everyone, this is Lahir from ABCs of Anesthesia and today I'm going to go through the three ways you can actually miss or fail to cannulate someone. Now let's get straight into it. So these are the three methods. First of all, you don't even get the vein, there's no flashback at all. The second method is you go through one of the other walls, whether it's the deep wall or a side wall. And finally, you don't advance the cannula enough. So what's happening is you're pushing the cannula into the wall of the vein and pushing the vein away. Just to go through this first one. So this is actually the easiest one. If you don't get the flashback, that means that you haven't traumatized the vein. So really, you just have to have another go at re-angling or re-attempting. I try all those things, you know, make sure your patient's okay, just reassure them. You might even put some local anesthetic into the skin just to make sure they're not feeling too much pain and do all of these things to make sure your patient is comfortable. But then it's really important to try and make sure your target is exactly the way you want it. So I'll do all the other things, including ensuring the tourniquet is at the right pressure, putting the arm down to help gravity enlarge the vein, tap on the vein as well, and then maybe even just choose another site you never know, maybe that vein you thought was great seems to have disappeared. And you wouldn't believe how many times that actually happens when you think that that vein is absolutely amazing. And the next time you look at it, it's for some reason, this tiny vein has actually disappeared completely. Sometimes you're going in and you think the vein is in one position, but then as you're going in, it just seems to roll to the side. There's no shame in re-angling or just reinserting a new cannula at the right position. Now, the second way of missing this vein is probably one of the commonest things you'll come up with during your training. You've already entered the vein, so you've got the flashback, but then as you're advancing to try to get the whole cannula and needle into that vein, you end up going through the other side. Now, obviously when this happens, it's, you know, you fail the vein. It's very hard to salvage this in adult veins. They're not muscular enough. And what happens is that the vein will blow out. Now, in a couple of other videos, I'll show you all the ways you can try to minimize this. One of the biggest, best techniques is to just level out completely, lift up your cannula and the vein, as you're advancing and that way you just pass it through. Just know that the cannula design is incredible. It's very, very hard to cut the superficial or top surface of that vein, but it's very easy because of the design of the cannula to go through the other end. I'll put some videos that show this technique really, really clearly. Now, one of the other ways you might miss is by actually going through one of the side walls. Imagine you have a tortuous vein and this is pretty common when we're in practice. Now, it's really important that you aim for the site that has the longest straight pathway of that vein. For example, this vein here, obviously there's a lot of curves, it can be quite difficult. But when I look at this vein, I look at this line across here, that's probably the longest straight line. And so my insertion point will be here, aiming in that direction, not somewhere like here where there's a shorter trajectory. So that's really important. The final way of missing this vein is you've got a flashback, so your needle's in the vein, but your cannula isn't inside. So you haven't pushed and advanced the cannula needle far enough into the lumen. Now what happens then is if it's not far enough, you're gonna, you're gonna push the cannula, trying to advance it. And what that does is it pushes the vein away. Now the way to avoid this is to know exactly how far you need to advance this cannula before you thread the plastic cannula itself. Now that distance is roughly the bevel distance plus a little bit more. Now this bevel distance changes for the different size of cannula you have. For example, a 22 gauge cannula, the bevel is about two millimeters. So you might just advance maybe three to four millimeters. But in a large 14 gauge needle, the bevel is about seven millimeters. And so if you make up for seven millimeters plus a little bit, plus a thick vein, you might be advancing 10 to 15 millimeters before you just advance that plastic cannula through. So I found this knowledge really incredibly useful to make sure that if I miss, I know exactly why I miss and I don't make up any other reasons for it. And then that way you can target the reasons why you've missed and improve your cannulation technique. Now there's a lot of other reasons that we go through in our heads that we think, oh, that's probably why we missed. Now some of these reasons might be that you think that you have say a valve. Now a valve is an internal structure. If you're in the vein with a cannula, it's not a reason that you'll miss. All you have to do is to pull back the cannula slightly out of the way of this valve and you'll still be able to flush this cannula and it'll still be okay for temporary use. Another way that people say you could miss is through vasospasm. So maybe at one point the vein looks large and then it just contracts. If you're in the vein, 
because you got flashback, that's really no reason that you'd miss. Even if the vein has spasmed, that's still not a problem as long as you follow this technique. Now, I hope those three mechanisms for missing the cannula were useful for you to know. Again, knowing how you can miss the cannula makes you a better anesthetist, makes you a better doctor, makes you better at cannulator overall. Thanks very much.